Today I'm joined by my TA Indiana for the statics video on moment about an axis. I'm going to solve two example problems using two different methods of solving for cross product because there's two main problem types when engineers will need to solve for moment about an axis. The first of these is piping systems. Fluid flowing through a pipe has both weight and momentum, so you can get a lot of complicated three-dimensional forces creating moments on the support structure for the pipes. The second application is gonna be freestanding towers with cable supports. Each of these cables represents a three-dimensional force that is exerting a moment about the base of the tower. Let's go. Two-dimensional moments are so much easier. You can usually just do force times distance when your force is perpendicular to your position vector. But in 3D space, not only is the force usually not perpendicular, you usually don't even know what angle your vector is at. So the default cross product equation you're probably familiar with is AB sine theta. Without that angle theta, we have to look to other methods. But before showing you either of the methods, we need to actually find R and F for this system. Position vector R is going to point from the point of interest where you're trying to find the moment to the line of action of the force. And this is usually easiest to find by the point of application of the force, although in the next example, I'll show you an alternative. And so using the dimensions on this picture, we can find that position vector R just using the X, Y, and Z components for I, J, and K. And the K value is negative because it's in the negative Z direction below the X, Y plane. Next, we'll find the force vector F using the provided coordinate direction angles. If you need a review on converting a three-dimensional vector when you're given coordinate direction angles into Cartesian form, then I've got another video about that. You can click the link up here and that'll take you to it. So now I've got the two pieces, the position vector and force vector, both in Cartesian form. Now we do cross product. Call the first method the textbook method because it's what you probably learned in a math class a long time ago, and it's probably also listed in your statics textbook. This method is split into three steps, one for I, one for J, one for K, and you convert your three by three matrix into a smaller two by two matrix for each of those three directions, and just calculate the determinant of each of those remaining two by two matrices. If you draw this fish shape, then you start your line from the top left and go down to the bottom right, that part is added, curve around upwards, and then from top right to bottom left is gonna be subtracted. But this fish in the middle is the reason why I do not like this method for cross product, and I'm gonna recommend instead the one that I'm gonna be doing next. And that's because the signs for the middle one are backwards. The top left to bottom right term is not like a regular determinant, it's actually the subtracted one, and the upper right bottom left is added. And a little bit of calculator work gets us to a final answer. You may want to pause the video to see where I found each of these numbers. And that's the final moment with units going to be Newton meters, which are a force times a distance. The second way to do cross product, I'll call the cool method because it avoids the possibility of making any sign mistakes. Everything's totally symmetrical. Being a hero doesn't make you cool. People become heroes because they're cool. You start off by making the three by three matrix as normal, but directly beneath it, you repeat the top two lines. So it ends up looking kind of like a five by three matrix. You then draw three diagonal lines and all of these lines will be added terms. And then these three diagonal lines will all be subtracted terms. So I wrote out the term here in two rows just to make it easier to see that the first three terms along the green diagonals are all added and the second three terms along the red diagonals are all subtracted. Then I grouped the two rows together by I, J, and K terms. And written down here at the bottom of the screen, you can see you end up with the exact same answer as using the Lane textbook method. Yeah. If you wanted to check whether this final answer makes sense, in particular to check whether or not you made any sign errors, you can use the right hand rule for moments to make sure that each of your I, J, K terms are at least in the correct direction. So for moments, the right hand rule means that if your thumb points in the direction of an axis, a positive moment will wrap around that axis in the same direction that your fingers curl. So the Y direction might be easiest to look at first. Point the thumb of your right hand to the right and you see that your fingers curl over the top and forward of the Y axis. Same thing if your thumb is pointing towards you, your fingers go over the top and to the left of the X axis. And if your right hand thumb is pointing upwards, your fingers would curl behind the Z axis. 
it's a little bit hard to tell which direction F is going over the X axis. But since the gamma angle was 45 degrees from the positive Z axis, that means that F is pointing upwards, which is gonna carry it up and over the X axis. So we do expect a positive term for the I component. Because F is pointing forward out of the page, it's gonna come backwards over the Y axis, which is gonna be in the negative Y direction. And then again, since F is coming forward out of the page, it's gonna wrap around behind the Z axis going to the right, which is the negative Z direction. So it looks like the final answer at least does have the correct sign for all three terms. For problem two, I'm gonna do this with just a cool method cross product. But for finding the position vector, I'm gonna show you that there's actually two different position vectors you can use, and they're both gonna give you the same answer. The position vector you choose can be anywhere along the line of action of the force. You can use either RA, which goes from point O to A, which is where the force is applied, or RB, which is still on the line of action of the force from the origin to point B. And these are both gonna give the same answer. But before doing the cross product, we are gonna have to use the position vector from A to B in order to convert F into Cartesian form. And if you need a refresher on position vectors and unit vectors, this video up here, I've got a video on that too. We'll set up the F equals FU equation by subtracting the position of B minus the position of A, that is the end position of the vector minus the initial position. So next I'll use the cool method to set up the cross product. I'll do both RA cross F and RB cross F. Cross product starts by writing out your three-dimensional matrix with i, j, k, your coordinate system along the top, then the position vector in the second row, your force in the third row, and then the cool method for cross product requires repeating the top two rows, again right beneath it, draw three diagonal lines, these terms will all be added together, and then three more diagonal lines, and these terms will all be subtracted. So here I've written out all six terms, three that are added, three that are subtracted for each of the two different position vector matrices. Then I cluster terms together based on their i, j, k components. Aside from tiny rounding differences, you can see that no matter which position vector you choose, you still get the same final answer at the end for the moment. Let me know down in the comments, which cross product method do you like better? Are you sticking with the old textbook method just because that's what you learned before? Or have I convinced you to give the new cool method a try? Your TA Indy likes the cool method better because he always forgets the minus sign in the middle term using the textbook method but you can use whichever one you want. So now that you've mastered moments about a point and you've gotten good with the cross product, the next video you should watch is moment about an axis. This is gonna be used for hinges. Anything like a door that swivels open around an axis, that's what you're gonna use, moment about an axis. And the awesome thing you'll learn in that video is gonna be the scalar triple product, which sounds really impressive, but really is just a slightly more complicated cross product, just slightly.